Okay, folks, let's get started. Um, welcome to Gateway API, what's new, what's next? This is the maintainer track Gateway API update, uh, and uh, we're all here to give you uh, some updates. Uh, most importantly, uh, who are we? Uh, my name is Nick Young. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at uh, Isovalon at Cisco, and I'm one of the four uh, Gateway API maintainers. And I'm Guy. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, and I'm also part of the Gateway API team. I'm Christine Kim. I also work at Isovalent at Cisco. Um, I focus primarily around open source dev experience, so I care about your pain. And I'm Amatia Lavacca. I'm a software engineer working at Kong, and I'm a Gateway API maintainer. Thanks very much, everyone. So as you can see, there's four of us up here. So our agenda for today is uh, I'm going to run everyone through what's new. Uh, Guy will run us through some stuff about policies. Uh, Christine will hit uh, user experience improvements. And then Mattia is going to hit uh, what's up next. So in the interest of time, I'll uh, <laughs> keep us moving. OK, um, so yeah, what's new? Uh, so the, probably the biggest change in Gateway API uh, version 1.2 is the new release cycle. Uh, so we have uh, committed to an official release cycle with designated time periods um, the f with four phases, scoping, iteration and review, API refinement and documentation, and then uh, API review and release candidates. So I want to walk through a couple of those because for those of you who are using Gateway API, this is, if you want to contribute, this is really going to matter. So um, the scoping phase is where we figure out what's going to be in the release uh, and uh, make sure that uh, we're choosing things that have, we have people to do and that the community is actually interested in. By uh, We do that with a voting process and a couple of other things. Um, one important thing is that uh, we graduate features, uh, we call features experimental when they're still experimental, and then once they are stable, we graduate them to standard. Um, we are currently full in the experimental uh, channel, uh, and so we uh, need to graduate some things to standard uh, to be able to uh, add more experimental features. So that's probably the thing that's most relevant for you using it, is until we get people willing to graduate stuff to standard, then we can't put new features in. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the output of this is a list of gaps and a target status for the lips for the, get, for the release. Uh, then we, once we pick the gaps, uh, we work on them. Actually, I just realized I did not define GEP. I should do that. For those of you who don't know, uh, uh, GEP stands for Gateway Enhancement Proposal. Uh, that is how Gateway API Project tracks uh, what proposals are upcoming, what we're doing, and where things are at. So once we pick the GEPs to work on in a release, we work on them, <laughs> oddly enough. Um, and experimental GEPs must be moved to implementable um, by the end of this phase so that they're ready to be implemented. Standard GEPs must have a to-do list for everything that they need to do by the end of this phase. Uh, then we move into API refinement, where we actually make changes to the API, to the go types, to the documentation, to all of the stuff we need to do, uh, and add conformance tests uh, for the features that are being added. And then we move to API review. Now, this is a really important part of the review of the, of the release process. As an upstream Kubernetes API, which is included as part of the Kubernetes project, although it is not included in the Kubernetes install, um, we have to do the same API as core Kubernetes API review that core Kubernetes APIs do. And so that's really, this is one of the key parts of the API that means that you, the users, can trust this thing in the same way that you trust a Kubernetes, any other Kubernetes API, because it goes through literally the same review process that any other piece of the Kubernetes code base does. Um, so yeah, the API reviewers check that uh, the API is in line with all the conventions and that we're doing things in a Kubernetes-y kind of way. Uh, and then once we're done with that, then we release, uh, release candidates that people can, that implementations in particular can try out and make sure that they're coding against the right areas. Now, uh, for those of you who might be interested in making changes to Gateway API, um, we take some changes at certain, at certain phases. Uh, this documentation is actually from our release cycle documentation available on the website. But uh, the key part is that you can see that in sort of uh, in the latter stage, we stopped taking changes to GEPs and uh, GEP updates and all those sorts of things. Um, but importantly, uh, bug fixes, documentation, uh, and further review can always happen, right? That's one of the most important things. Um, so if you want to see, I'm going to quickly run through the uh, 
uh, release 1.2 changes, the actual changes that were included, uh, the full release notes are available at this uh, QR code. So if you want to actually read along or save this for later, uh, that's the one to do. So we did include two breaking changes uh, in v1.2. We generally try not to include breaking changes, obviously, but these ones are both breaking changes. We removed the alpha versions of gRPC route and reference grant. Um, so this affects implementations that are still using those resources, but we have had uh, v1 beta 1 for reference grant and uh, v1 available for gRPC route for some time. So this is us keeping our, keeping our stuff in order and uh, making sure that uh, everything is tidy. Um, probably the slight, the change that I know has broken some people is uh, changing uh, supported features in gateway class status from uh, a string to a struct. Um, and so that one is intended to allow us to extend this for you all later. Uh, or get in uh, material, maybe I'll, we can talk about that another time. So, um, the best parts. Um, we graduated some things to stable. Infrastructure labels and annotations are now extended, which means they are optional for implementations to support, but they are stable. So this is, that means that uh, on Gateway there is an infrastructure stanza that allows you to set labels and annotations, and for implementations that provision Kubernetes resources, those labels and annotations must be copied to everything it provisions. One of the things that this lets you do is if your implementation creates a service, you can set annotations or labels on that service to say, do the right thing when you're running in a particular cloud. Lots of cloud providers have their own annotations and labels that you need to be able to set on services to do certain stuff. This lets you do that from within Gateway API in a standard way. We've also added uh, timeouts and durations uh, to HTTP route, as well as support for backend protocol, which um, backend protocol uh, lets you set the protocol that should be used between the gateway and your backends uh, inside your Kubernetes cluster. So you, now you can say, uh, my backend expects to talk HTTP2 in clear or WebSockets using uh, the app protocol field and service. I'd encourage you to read more about that if you're interested. Okay, um, there, we did add some new experimental features as well. Um, initial support for retries in HTTP route. Now I know a lot of people have been wanting this one, so uh, early support is now in. Um, Percentage-based request mirroring, so you can already mirror requests. Now this lets you say, I want to mirror 10% of the requests to, uh, to some other service instead of saying, I want to mirror 100%. Uh, and then lastly, we've done some, we already have a config called backend TLS policy for configuring TLS connection between your gateway implementation and your backend. Uh, this, we made a bunch of improvements there. You can specify some SANs and um, add some TLS options and stuff like that. Um, and all three of these things, because they have just been added to uh, experimental, don't have conformance testers yet because you know, they've just been added and so now implementations can go off and implement them and then we can write conformance tests to match. Um, lastly, uh, we had a whole bunch of leadership changes in this cycle. Um, so, congratulations to everyone here who have been promoted. Uh, so, Mattia, let's have a hand for Mattia as the new Gateway API maintainer. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Mike uh, got promoted to uh, Service Mesh Gamma Lead. Uh, Flynn and Arco both got promoted to GEP Reviewer. Uh, Leo got promoted to uh, Conformance Approver. Uh, and uh, Candice to Conformance Reviewer. And to uh, Gateway Cattle Reviewer. So yeah, another round of applause for everyone who uh, got promotions, thanks. <laughs> awesome, well with that, I'm gonna hand over to Guy to talk to us about policies. Thanks, Nick. Well, policies are, in my opinion, one of the most exciting areas of Gateway API. Uh, they let us define additional specification for Gateway API related resources from the outside meaning that without directly modifying the resource APIs or instances. So they are based on a concept called meta resources, defined um, in GAP 713 as objects that augment the behavior of other objects in a standard way. And there are several applications uh, for policies, starting with the ability to extend otherwise stable APIs with gateway API capabilities. So for example, we can use policies to extend the Kubernetes service API. Two policies uh, that fall in this category are the backend TLS policy, mentioned by Nick, and also the backend LB policy. 
Another, another application for policies is that uh, they provide uh, the implementations with a way uh, to bring on their features to Gateway API without immediately uh, having to request changes to the Gateway API CRDs, um, especially when consensus is still in the process of being built around those features due to the uh, variations and the different flavors uh, of features across the different implementations. There are also some um, inherent benefits associated with policies. Uh, for example, um, they help promote separation of consents and decoupling uh, in a way that enable users to uh, craft more specialized responsibilities and more fine-grained RBAC and, and this kind of things. And policies also allow uh, for non gateway API implementations to contribute to the ecosystem uh, by adding their own kinds of policies that build on top of the implementations. As of Gateway API 1.2, uh, we have two classes of policies, direct policies and inherited policies. I will not be focusing too much on the definitions and the difference between those two classes of policies. Instead, I strongly encourage you to check out a talk delivered, an outstanding talk delivered yesterday by Kate Osborne, who's just over there. So where she goes uh, through all the the details and the differences between those two uh, uh, classes of policies. Here I'm going to be focusing more on what's new and what's next about policies. And in that sense, uh, we moved uh, direct policies to experimental, uh, while uh, we continue to work and refine the definition for inherited policies and key concepts like defaults and overrides, merge strategies, and so on. Um, I've already mentioned uh, backend TLS policy and backend LB policy. These are the two kinds of policies that are common across the implementations. Uh, we're now documenting uh, the implementations that are ready or would be ready to pass a conformance test for backend TLS policy. So Envoy Gateway, Istio, and Nginx Gateway Fabric uh, have all been uh, uh, making good progress in that regard. The most progress, uh, however, um, has been on the implementation-specific policies. With multiple implementations, multiple Gateway API implementations, is starting to introduce now their own kinds of policies. So Envoy Gateway uh, introduced five new kinds of policies uh, to manage the traffic between the clients and the, and the gateway, between the gateway and the backends, policies to um, extend the gateway, policies to, uh, in general, to expose Envoy features. Uh, Istio has also been adapting its configuration CRDs to align with the policy attachment framework uh, by adding the target wraps to their uh, APIs. And this is a non-exhaustive list. Um, in fact, many implementations are starting to adopt policies, and some, some non-implementations are too. Um, this is the case of Quadrant, the last one there. Uh, that has four kinds of policies that aim to be uh, um, agnostic regarding the underlying uh, gateway controller that is adopted by the users. Also new in 1.2, um, we have consolidated the change uh, from singular form target ref to plural target refs. Um, so now a, a single policy instance can target multiple uh, objects at a time. Uh, that's helping avoid some repetition. Targeting a section of a resource has also been extended to the route objects with the addition of the name field to the HP route rule and gRPC uh, rule uh, types. Uh, this has um, applications beyond policies, but it also serves policies uh, in combination with the section name field of the target reds. And uh, Nick already mentioned uh, the additions to the backend TLS policy, the new fields that we added there. On the other hand, we also continue to tackle the challenges related to policies, right? So like the discoverability problem. Uh, how gate API resource owners uh, know that their resources are being affected by policies. And a related issue to that is the issue of visualizing the affected policies pinned to the specific context where they apply given the combinatorial complexity that emerges from policies that now can target multiple levels in the hierarchy, policies that can target sections of a resource, and policies that can uh, implement defaults, overrides, etc. But uh, on the good side, 
tools like Gateway Cuddle uh, have been key in addressing uh, these challenges, these problems. So I need to give a big thank you to Gaurav, who's over there, and the work that he's been doing on Gateway Cuddle. Um, other contributions from the community as well, such as Quadrant's policy machinery library that helps policy controllers and policy implementations uh, to uh, programmatically calculate the effective policies and uh, generate visualizations of the topology of network resources uh, showing which policies are attached to each object. Now looking ahead, um, in upcoming uh, versions of Gateway API, uh, we're close to finalizing the conformance test for backend TLS policy with hopes of graduating it to standard. And here I need to thank Candence, who is not here today, uh, for the work that she's been doing. Um, there's also a handful um, uh, requests of uh, API extensions with um, currently uh, uh, multiple gaps uh, being discussed, some of which uh, could evolve uh, into new kinds of policies. I'm not saying that these will become policies, but some of them could become policies. And regarding the policy attachment framework itself, uh, we've been having uh, active conversations about possible new definitions for direct and inherited policies emerging from a generalized concept of merge strategies. Uh, we're also exploring more dynamic ways to target resources, uh, for example, by using label selectors and uh, other potential improvements to the target reps and stated standards of the policies in general, all aiming at providing some better user experience whenever you're using policies. And with that, I hand over to Christine. All right, so we're going to be talking about some user experience updates. So we really do care about how you guys are adopting Gateway API. So Gateway Cuddle was mentioned earlier, but it's a really great tool to explore Gateway API resources. So for example, this is just an output of exploring some policies. Another really cool thing about it is that you can also visualize it. So if you kind of want to dip your toe in, there's a great example folder that I highly recommend. If you're not super familiar with Gateway API, you can explore around and it outputs a dot graph for you, so super cool. Another thing is ingress to gateway, which translates your ingress and provider CRDs to gateway API resources. Um, this is a really good tool if you have a sandbox cluster and maybe you want to have your ingress and explore what it will look like as a uh, gateway and a HTTP route. So disclaimer, it is not prod, so do not run it in prod. Keep it in your sandbox cluster, uh, but it's really great if you have your provider and you want to see what it will look like. Uh, another thing that I really want to emphasize is the idea of personas. So if you're familiar with the Gateway API website, you've probably seen this before. Um, we have your infrastructure providers, your cluster operators, and lastly, lastly, your application developers. But we started also identifying them with actual people because end users are people. So you have Ian as your infrastructure provider, Chihiro as your cluster operators, and Anna as your application developers. And so please note, like we really put some thought into choosing these names. So Ian starts with an I, infrastructure, Chihiro C, cluster operator, Anna, and is an application developer. So they all have different use cases and different priorities. So Ian probably cares about your infrastructure, Chihiro probably cares about your network policies and what has what permissions. And lastly, Anna just wants to serve her app. So if you are an end user of Gateway API, please tell us any pain points that you have. We have a Gateway API survey out. Um, so you don't have to rush and scan it now. It'll be on future slides, so I see. Um, so take your time taking out your phone. But if you have any pain points, uh, we want to hear about it. How do you use Gateway API? We're always trying to improve it, and we really care about your feedback. Something else that is really great is we have a very active discussion board on the Gateway API repo itself. So there's some good discussions. Um, if you want to see future features implemented, go there and highlight it. And we also have in room 155D, 155D, there is a user experience discussion. So if you do want to have your thoughts heard, please follow us up like after this. We're going to march all the way back there because it is a trek. So um, follow us there if you have any concerns and want to pick some brains. All right. Yeah. So we started uh, with Nick uh, with saying what's new in the Gateway API. Now we are going to talk about, well, what's next with the new upcoming release. 
Uh, as Nick uh, spoke about in the introduction, we are trying to uh, use a new release process. And we are basically in the scoping phase for v1.3 for the Gateway API, which means that we have to select new features that can be um, put into the experimental channel and some other features that can be graduated to the standard channel, right? Uh, here is uh, an exhaustive list, so far at least, um, of gaps that can be, uh, in, um, can be put into the experimental channel. The first one is the retry budgets. I, I won't go through all of them in the details. You can see the whole discussions about the scoping for experimental on the right side. But yeah, we have the retry budgets, authorization, which is something very important that we are discussing a lot about. Then we have the ready conditional routes, a uh, little bit controversial. GRPC retry, course filter, HTTP cookie match, query parameter filter, and uh, listener set and listener matching. Uh, again, we have a limited uh, amount of features that can be uh, put into the experimental channel. But yeah, if you are very interested in some of them, please go to the link there and vote for your favorite ones. We are going to do the same for the standard channel, basically. So, so far we have only a couple of features that we aim to graduate in uh, v1.3. They have been already presented by um, Nick before, uh, because they were introduced in the experimental channel in v1.2. So basically they are the percentage-based request mirroring and the backend TLS policy. Again, if you are interested in uh, those features and you want to see them graduated, please go to the uh, link there and vote for them. Okay, another aspect that, well, it's not new, but it's something that we are discussing a lot, is the CRD lifecycle management. Um, as you already probably know, the Gateway API is the first CRD-based Kubernetes official API, which means that, well, Kubernetes is not uh, in core Kubernetes, because you have to uh, install the Gateway API and up update the Gateway API by yourself, uh, and the Gateway API is CRD-based. This has some cons and pros. For example, some pros are the fact that we are kind of pretty independent from the Kubernetes uh, release cycle, from the Kubernetes uh, announcement process, because as Nick said at the beginning, we have our gaps, which, are, which is the, our, our cap version. But we have also some problems, such as the fact that you cannot have feature gates on CRDs, basically. Uh, here is a very small example. This is the HTTP route spec uh, with two different fields. The first one is the timeout, which is extended, but in the standard channel. And the second one is the retry, which is in the experimental channel. Um, so here is how the two resources look like. On the left one, we, on the left side, you have the standard HTTP route. On the right, you have the experimental HTTP route. And uh, how Gateway API works is that if you have the standard channel uh, installed in your cluster and you create the experimental HTTP route, basically your creation gets rejected by the API server because that resource doesn't exist at all in, in your API server, right? Because that retry field doesn't exist. So this is the way that we implemented to uh, overcome the absence of feature gates uh, on CRDs. Um, this has some complexity to deal with. Uh, for example, you want to update the Gateway API from version X to version Y. If you are in the standard channel and if you want to keep being in the standard channel, it's pretty straightforward. It works surprisingly well. But if you want to get to, if you want to change a channel from the experimental to standard, that can be tricky. Sometimes we can have some problems. So uh, if you want to have a complete overview of the problem, there is the, the discussion, the, the GitHub discussion. So some proposals that, that, that have been made, these are just proposals, it's nothing decided yet. The first one is the introduction of separate groups. So basically, uh, instead of having two different channels uh, with the same API group, we could introduce a separate experimental API group so that users can have um, standard and experimental APIs in the same clusters at the same time. 
Uh, or the second possible solution is the introduction of a validating admission policy uh, in combination with a single API channel. This has been proposed by the SIG API machinery folks. It's, again, this is not decided, but it's something that we could do in the future. Uh, last but not least, LLM Instance Gateway. It's a very nice project that is maintained by the working group serving, um, which pro basically proposes to define an inference gateway based on Envoy. And it's basically based on an extension to target LLM-specific backends. Again, there is the GitHub repository. Um, very last thing, as Christine already said, we created a Gateway API survey. So no matter if you are a cluster operator or a user, application developer, we really want your feedback because we really want to get better, basically. So there are a bunch of questions there. And again, yeah, your feedback is very welcomed. And that's it, I guess. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone. I think we've got a few minutes, so uh, if anyone has questions, there's uh, a couple of uh, microphones uh, down there that uh, you can go up to and ask questions. Oh, there's a microphone, sorry, uh, that uh, you can run up to and ask questions for the recording if, uh, if anyone's got any. Okay, well... Uh, Bit of a countdown, five, four, anyone coming? Anyone want them? No? Okay, great, well, uh, let, thanks everyone for coming. Really appreciate it. Uh, like Matthias said, uh, all of us up here and the rest of the Gateway API community are really working hard to make sure that this is useful uh, for everybody. So we really, really, really encourage everybody to fill out the survey, provide us feedback as much as you can. We can't build this without knowing what you all want. So tell us. Thanks very much.